Hi everyone. Marianne Cowan here from Pinery Paper Crafts. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator here in Ottawa, Canada. And I come live Fridays at 3. I'm a little bit late today because I had to charge my phone. And um, during celebration I like to pop on at other times just to showcase some of the products that we have in the new annual catalog. And also during celebration, which is January and February, there are free items in Canada with a $60 purchase. You can choose a level one item and for a $120 order you can choose a level two item. So there are lots of pretty things in here. Today we're using Dandy Designs. It's a 12 by 12 designer series paper. It's a level two because it has 48 sheets in it and it is very fun to work with. Just making sure I'm live in the right spot. There we go. So it's definitely a pack you'll want. It's a, a lot of a nice palette of spring colors. And today we're going to be using the blue that matches balmy blue. All right, I'm just hopefully I can see your comments today. It's sometimes an issue. I don't know what it's like where you are, but we're getting a bit of a snowstorm here. Hey, Pat. It looks like it's tapering off, which is good, but it's much prettier with snow because we did have freezing rain last week and that was just a mess. So in the mini catalog, we're using one of the, the new mini catalog. We're using a stamp set called Friendly Gnomes, and there was another stamp set in the last mini catalog. I don't remember exact name, but it had gnomes as well. And the dies from that stamp set, just the dies, carried over, and they fit these three little adorable gnomes. So today we're going to be doing this little, I'm going to say Valentine's Day gnome, but it could just be a love gnome. We're going to be using this little guy. And I'll show you um, another card that I made that kind of inspired me to use the gnomes today. So friendly gnomes is what we'll be working with. And there's wobbles. Before I do that, I just want to remind you about my next upcoming class. It is Country Floral Lane. I've been using this set so much. And I'll show you the cards that we're making and then some other ones that you'll get in the PDF. So here are three of the four cards. We'll be doing four cards, eight cards, four designs, two of each. That's typically what my classes are. So here's the first one. And one of the options for this class is the Country Bouquet Stamp Set and Coordinating Punch. And for all levels of classes, you get the pastel adhesive backed sequins, which are really, really pretty. So that's an option you can add on to your class. And it punches out this heart and these little leaves. It's really cool. So this is one card. This is another card. And this is the third one that I've designed. So I haven't designed the last one yet. Sometimes I get inspired to do the first ones and then I have to let it sittle, settle, settle, settle a bit and then I'll design the last one. And plus I look online and get some ideas and inspiration. So those are three of the cards and then you'll also in your tutorial, which always comes with it, you'll get the measurements and instructions to put together this card, which was on a Facebook Live, and this one, which was also on a Facebook Live. You won't get the materials, just the instructions, and this one, which I haven't actually shown yet. So this is another one that I made using that gatefold um, design. Just wanted to say 
Happy Valentine's Day. So you'll get the measurements and instructions for these three, but you'll get all the materials you need to make these three and one other one. So registration on my blog, mariannecowan.com slash events. All the details are there. Now I'll show you one other gnome card that I made earlier today and I was inspired by a post I saw on Instagram and the post was by I don't know how to pronounce this but I'm gonna say Stempelweiss could be something similar to that so I didn't understand the video but she her videos are really good so you can just watch along and you'll know what she's doing so this is the one that I made earlier today with that cute little gnome again and I did it in green this would be cute too if you had a little shamrock you could put that there instead of the heart so I just loved this design and so I thought I'd give it a try and he the gnomes are really fun to color but today we are making a box and a card and I'm going to show you what it looks like in another one of the free celebration items called favorite flowers so here's the box and here's the card that I made that matches. So this box, when you undo the ribbon, it just opens up and it actually fits note cards. So if you wanted to give someone a little gift of note cards, I would probably put chocolate or something in there, little homemade cookies. So that's the box. And here is the coordinating card. And I also did an envelope because the paper's free. And your envelopes are so much prettier when they're decorated. So we're using the same design and we're gonna use different paper. But I will show you, when I first started playing with this, I thought maybe petal pink might look nice. And then, it's not bad, actually, now that I look at it, but it didn't really match the ribbon I was using. So then I thought, uh, what's this one? Pale papaya. I thought, oh yeah, for sure. And then when I put it against it, it's like, ooh, yeah, no. So I ended up going with Calypso Coral. And I think it looks pretty and it looks nice with this ribbon. I don't know, I just wanted, really wanted to use this ribbon. So that's what we did. Okay, so that's our model for our box and really just the box. And then we're gonna make a card. So I have all the stuff for the card out on top. So let's make that first. That's for the box. It's a really simple box to put together. So when you cut the box, you cut off, you do 12, so you need a 12 by 12 piece of paper, and you cut it at nine and a half. So then you have two and a half inches left, a strip. So I use that two and a half inches. Oh, I knew I was gonna. So I thought I would use those two and a half inches for the front of my card. So it's a portrait style card, four and a quarter by 11. Um, fold it at five and a half or in half. So here's what I had left over. So I cut it at five and a quarter, both and then five and a quarter, so there is a, still a little piece left over. And I'm going to put it together like this. Let's see if this is going to work. I tried both ways. I tried, do I like this way? Or would I prefer this way? And I decided to go with this way. And we'll see. So what type of thing you might want to do too and try one each way. And if you're making a bunch of boxes, you'll have lots of little pieces left over. So just a little bit of an edge. So I'll put the two side pieces on first and then I'll center that larger piece. It's a great way to use up your little scraps. Now having said that, I'm just going to quickly put this on and see if it's matching. Yep, that's pretty good. Because you really want to have those all lined up, otherwise you will notice. Okay, so let's go ahead and put glue on this. Now I want to get it in the middle. So we've got half, one, two, three. I'm actually counting the little boxes to make sure it's in the middle. And also it's easy to, it's kind of in the middle, it's easy to line it up because you have these nice lines. 
Okay, so when I punched out, no, I didn't punch them. I die cut these two pieces from something fancy. And you have different little tops that you can use. So I did one with this little tulip and then one with just the keyhole because I'm going to put a piece of ribbon through. And I also use these dies for the frames for the box. So you'll know when we get to that part that that's what I used. I, I've played around with this so many times. I overthink. I over, I'm overthinking it for sure. Um, but I do have this little tulip thing. So I'm going to put it inside. So these are the little pieces that cut out from here, from this little keyhole. So I thought I would just put them right here at the bottom. And they're pretty small. Probably tweezers would help. Oops, that's a lot of glue. The one thing about putting a lot of glue on the inside of your card is you might glue your card together. I'm going to dab it. Kleenex. There we go. There still is a little bit there. I was doing a class at a retirement home yesterday and trying to make sure people weren't using too much glue so that their cards didn't get stuck together. Okay, there we go. So that's just a way to use up that little piece. I was going to put a heart in there too, but I think I'll just leave it. So now we have our two pieces. I'm going to put this one flat and then pop this one up. And I was trying to decide which way I wanted to do it. Do I want to do it like that? Because my little gnome guy, I, wa I was wondering if he showed up better on the white than the blue. And he does show up better on the white, but I think I like him better on the blue. So we're going to put this down flat, but before we do, I'm deciding which ribbon I want to use. So this is Pool Party Sheer Ribbon, and it is pretty sheer. I was wanting to use this one, but I want this to match my box. And this one doesn't really match this side of the box, although it does match the other side of the box. Hmm. Whereas this one kind of picks up whatever color you put it with. Um, let's try. So I'm going to wrap it because it's I folded it this way on purpose so I could wrap my um, ribbon around. I'll put it down in a second once I get my ribbon through. And then we're going to tie a bow. I don't know if this is the best way to do this, but that's the way I'm doing it. I think this will be pretty. That other ribbon is really nice and it's new. This one is in the annual catalog. But this one also ties really nice bows. Sometimes you have to be careful you don't pull it too tight because then it makes it go wonky. All right, get my scissors. Oh, I almost cut right through. That would have been bad. Well, it would, not bad, just would have been a redo. Okay, I like that, so I'm gonna put some glue. And I do want it about there. And I want this more in the middle. I'll go back and put a glue dot to finish that up. Okay, we'll use this later for our box. So now I have this one that I'll pop up and put our little gnome in. And I, I tried different ways to put the sentiment, but I think it's going to be cutest just popping out from him um, on an angle. Maybe not quite that angled. First let's put him on with a wobble. These are mini action springs and they make cards just so much fun. So you buy them on Amazon. These are the mini wobbles. The bigger ones are quite a bit bigger and this is all this is perfect for what we're doing today you have to make sure that you have the big part of the spring down so a good way to remember is one part's clear 
that goes on your whatever you're wobbling. So that's going to go on the gnome. That's going to go like that. Let's just check. Now, there was one other thing. I, I thought it needed something else, so I did punch out two hearts using our heart punches. And these are punched out of this beautiful vellum basic specialty designer series paper. I've used it before and it comes in polka dots, stripes, and leaves. So I thought the polka dots would be fun. So I'm thinking I might want to put this here and then that there. Now as soon as you add the lacy one it frills it up a bit. So I could go with just this and as soon as you add a heart it kind of makes it into more of a love card but I think that's okay. I think I want to use the plain one and let's just see where I want everything. Yeah so this is going to go here so about to there. It's throwing me off because it's, I'm thinking it should be all the way over, but it shouldn't. Okay, that's good. And now our heart. So I'm putting glue here where I know it's going to be hidden. And then our little wobble, but let's put this on first with some dimensionals. I love little gnomes. My daughter asked me what was with all the gnomes this year. I don't know, I'm just a little bit obsessed. They're just so cute. And they're really fun to color, I will say. Okay, so this one I do want to put on a bit of an angle, but I'm making sure it's not going off the card. Not too much though, because I don't want the gnome hanging sideways. I am gonna put a tad more glue. With this glue and this vellum, because it has a bit of a pattern, you don't really see it that much. Now, to get this off, just put it like that. I think I put them on a bit crooked, but that's okay. <gasps> that's so cute. Now I'm gonna put a little glue dot under here, because I see it's lifting up a little bit. So these are the adhesive backed pastel adhesive backed sequins. I love them because they come in two sizes and you get 300 in a package. And I've used a lot of them already. So let's put a big one. They're iridescent so they kind of pick up the color that you're using. Adorable. Anyone else crafting today? There we go. I like it. Okay, so there's our card. Now you'll notice on the other one, I had little white dots on it because she had done it on her video and I did, did happen to have um, a little a marker that I could just put little dots on, but I think I'll just leave it for this one. Hi, Kathy. <coughs> Alright, so now we have the card, now we're going to make the matching box. So we'll just leave this here, over to the side. And of course you can get carried away adding stuff, which I tend to do. So here we have our piece of paper, it's double sided. And we've scored it at... Um, three and a half, five and a half, nine, and eleven. So you'll see on one end it's got a small little piece, that's the flap for the box, and then you turn it and you score it at two inches 
on each side. So two inches on that side, two inches on this side. <coughs> Goodness. And then always be careful when you're scoring designer series paper. It's not as thick as cardstock, although this stuff is fairly thick. But you don't want to rip your you don't want to rip your edge and get your box all made and then you've ripped it. So I'm just going through and scoring it gently. at all the fold lines. And if you're on my team and coming tomorrow, we are making this box. Okay, so now we're gonna take our snips and we're going to, which way is easier for you to see? I think this side. We're gonna cut all the way up to the two inch mark. And this one little corner here We're actually going to take right off. And I think I did this one on a bit of an angle. So just right up to the two inch mark. This box is so easy to make. And it's a fairly good size, not huge, but you put a nice little gift in it. So we have one, two, three, and then cut that one off. We'll flip it over, and we'll do the same. If you're interested in purchasing the starter kit, it's a great deal right now. And you can check my website. I have um, a link there where it says all about the joining special. During celebration, they always have a special and it's always a good deal. So what I like to do now, now that I've got those off, is I like to just, there's a, there's a punch for this, but hey, it takes two seconds. Just round the corners. You're gonna be amazed how easy this is to make. And then for these two little flaps, I give them a little bit of a trim so they they slide inside easier. Once you've made a few boxes, you kind of know that you're going to need sides to fold in, you're going to need either a flap or some kind of opening. So let's get rid of all these pieces. Shoot them over this way. So now we have our box and watch this. This is the bottom. These are the sides and you just literally fold it like that. Let me show you again. So here's what it looks like now. I'll turn it this way. Push these in. Now I always like the seam of a box to go to the back. So when I lift it up I'll put these ones in first. I'll tuck I'm going to try to make it so you can see better. These go here and then those tuck to the back. So you can go crazy with the glue if you want, but I'll show you what I'm going to do and it, it works perfect. So these are the ones that are getting folded to the back. So I'm going to take my stamp and seal plus and I'm going to go as close to the edge as I can. And couple more. The one to the edge is the important one because that's going to hold it the best so you don't really see a gap. You could also use tear and tape. I brought it over just in case I wasn't sure what I was going to use. But Okay, so remember this is the piece that's going to get folded to the back. Tuck these ones in and if you want to you can go back later and glue those but I never have. And I'm just putting this like this so you can see better. So pull this one in. Now one thing about tear and tape, as soon as it hits, it's glued. So there we go. So what I'm doing is I'm pushing this to meet the paper right at the fold, and then I'm just folding that back. Let's see how I did that? See, see the little flaps in there? You can take a glue dot and, and stick them down, but it's really not necessary. Okay, look at this. Oh, actually, I'm going to trim these off too. 
They don't need to be this big. You can keep them that big if you want, but they don't need to be. So this tucks in, this tucks in. Voila. Now, you can leave this little flap on the outside if you want. See why I tucked the see why I trimmed these when you're tucking them in? It's easier if they're trimmed a little bit. So, I'm just tucking them in. So you could leave this flap on the outside. That's very pretty as well. Maybe we'll do that. But here's what we're going to do for the rest. You just have to decide because when you put your front pieces on, if you put it up here, then you could use that to close it too, but we're gonna use ribbon. Um, so just think about how you want it to look at the end. Do you want that piece there? Do you want your bow there? So I did cut out balmy blue and then I thought, wait a minute, why don't I use this beautiful piece? This is the, um, hmm. It's in the new catalog. Can't remember the exact name. Textured shimmer paper. And it comes in um, shaded spruce, balmy blue and white. Did I get that right? Shaded spruce, balmy blue, and white. I did. And it's just really fun. So we're not using this one. We're going to use the balmy blue, or we're going to use the textured shimmer paper. So maybe for this one, I will put it down a bit lower so that we can um, put our ribbon over entire bow right here. So I did go ahead and stamp, there's gnome one better than you. Oh, don't you love it? So that's going to get glued onto our balmy blue piece. I use white glue when I have anything embossed or this textured paper. I find it sticks better. Now once you've decided is it going to be a Valentine's or a love box then I did grab some hearts to put on the front that we will dress it up a little bit with. But let's put our dimensionals on first. Here's the trick. You put your dimensionals only on the side because your ribbon is going to go up and through. So let's get our ribbon now. Just makes it easier than trying to fish it through. And our dimensionals. Which, oh here they are. So I'm going to put two dimensionals there and there. and there and there. You only have to make sure you don't put them right in the middle so that your ribbon can run through. Now remember this is made of paper so it is delicate but I think it's beautiful. So we want to center this because this has lines. I'm gonna actually count. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. So about one, two, three, four. About there is where I want it. So don't push down on it really hard. Open your box up and then push like that. Or you can go like that. Okay, that's good. That's a, probably, I probably could put it a little bit lower, but that's okay. Let's get some more ribbon here. So our bow is gonna go right here. Make sure I have enough. So the other ribbon would have been pretty as well. It's just not really the same color, but when you open up the box, it does match the colors inside. So you could use it, but I already made a decision, so I'm just gonna stick with it. Now let's try to tie a bow. I think this is just the cutest little set, the card with the matching box. This ribbon is slippy. And I want a fairly good size bow. Isn't that cute? Yeah, this could have come down a little bit and it looks a bit crooked, but hey, it's all good. So I'm gonna put this one on with a bit of glue. 
and one dimensional on this side because this is popped up I don't want it popped up again but I do want it popped up over here and I've already added Wink of Stella to this little heart so this was used with the punch from the country bouquet and they've got it designed so that when you put it in the punch it punches out both of them which is a very cool feature and then we have our little one let's put that over here just use a little bit of glue this one does not appear to have a wink of Stella on it it's always close by Thanks, Pat. It is a good size. You could put a small ball of yarn in there. Makes traveling easier. All right, I'm going to add a few of our embellishments, the adhesive pastel adhesive backed sequins. So let's add, let's add two little ones there. These are so pretty. So there's a pink, which I don't even know which pink it is. And I'm pretty sure that's balmy blue and gold. So they'll be really nice. I believe they're in the, with the Valentine's Day stuff. All right, so it looks nice with the flap out, but you could tuck it in as well, your choice. And you could also color another little gnome to put on the front of the box. I was, I didn't do that as you can see. Keeping it simple. It was going to take long enough to do all this. All right, I'm going to get rid of some stuff and then I'll show you. So here's the measurements and it'll be up on my blog later today. MarianneCowan.com is my blog and after I do my Facebook lives I try to get them posted with the measurements and then uploaded to YouTube as well. And here's the matching card. So sending happy thoughts, there's no one better than you. I think that would be really fun to give somebody. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I do appreciate it if you like or share my video. And if you're watching the replay on YouTube, I encourage you to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification button so you'll know when I post new videos. And same with Facebook, you can click the notification so that you get a message um, saying that I'm going live. All right, definitely a cute little project to give somebody. And as I said, if you're part of my team and you're coming tomorrow, we're going to be making this box and a coordinating card. Maybe not quite as complicated as this one, but um, we will have fun playing. Hopefully the snowplow comes by. Actually, it was just down our street a few minutes ago, so it should be all cleared up. Okay, thank you for joining me today. Have a great weekend and we'll see you next time. Thanks everyone.